It's already getting weird in here, isn't it? Yeah. I've now had Microsoft's Xbox Series X console for about two years, and I've used it to play games, run movies from discs in a variety of formats, and to stream videos and movies from different services. But since I also own a PS5, a Nintendo Switch, a Valve Steam Deck, and a high-end gaming PC, the competition for my gaming time is higher than ever. While it certainly remains a reliable and very capable gaming console, the shifting tides of my own gaming habits raise some crucial questions about the Series X's relevance in a landscape dominated by a diverse array of gaming options. Stick around because today we're going to examine our gaming preferences, the evolving industry, and how this console fits into the stack of technology offerings we see today. So for context, I purchased an Xbox One X console back in 2018, and incidentally that was the first Xbox system I ever purchased. At the time I got that One X console, I had a base model PS4, which I never upgraded to the PS4 Pro. Back then, now six years ago, I was really getting into watching movies on physical media, specifically with the unofficial goal of expanding my knowledge around horror films. It feels kind of funny to reflect on now, but at the time, the fact that the Xbox One X had a 4K Blu-ray drive in it was actually a pretty big selling point for me. What really made me use my Xbox One X the most, however, was the Game Pass subscription service. I wound up using Game Pass pretty heavily for that first year or so when I had my One X, and I kept my subscription active for another year or so once I got this Series X. Today, I'm no longer a Game Pass subscriber, as I've trended more and more towards PC gaming over the last few years, with occasional console play when cool looking exclusives come along. However, when I look back at the new games that have come out over the last couple of years that I've had my Series X, the exclusives that I've had the most interest in playing have been on the PS5 and the Nintendo Switch. Kind of ironically, another justification I'd made to myself for getting the Series X when I did was that it would serve as a convenient way for me to play some of the future titles in the Xbox lineup that I was most excited about, like, Starfield and eventually the Elder Scrolls 6. Critically, I also bought a new high-end PC in the summer of 2021, which I intended to use about 95% of the time for media production, like editing videos, photography, and audio. In my big bad 2021 brain, I didn't want to clutter it up with video games. I told myself I'd be okay playing games like Starfield on the Xbox Series X when it came out, simply for the sake of convenience. As it turned out in real life, my curiosity for what games like Red Dead Redemption 2, Resident Evil 4, and Starfield would look like running on my big power-hungry graphics card won out, so my views and preferences have clearly changed since 2021. All this is to say that, ultimately, I now play my Series X the least of the modern systems that are out. I keep the console connected to the TV in my living room for playing games sometimes, EA Sports FC 24 being the one I've put the most time into here recently, and for occasional Blu-ray disc playback when my wife and I or friends want to watch a movie from a disc. Nevertheless, most of the gaming that happens in the living room is done on the Switch, and the vast majority of movies and TV series we're watching are typically done through a streaming app. So I think this brings us to the most important question of the video, is the Xbox Series X worth it? From my perspective, and as you've probably gotten a decent sense of over the course of this video, the Series X I bought has been a little harder to justify buying and owning when I did over the last couple of years. Speaking only for myself, there simply haven't been that many Xbox exclusives that have appealed to me personally in such a way that I felt like they were a system seller or a killer app that I just had to have. The initial appeal for me back in 2018 when I bought my One X and then later the Series X in 2022 when I got that was really rooted in graphical upgrades and by the nature of them both being consoles, convenience. These days, when it comes to buying non-exclusive multi-platform games, I first look into how that game performs on PC with a targeted eye at whether or not it'll run well on Steam Deck. If that multi-platform game is not on Steam, that's when I go to check and see how it runs on Series X, PS5, or Switch. At this point in my life as a man in his mid-30s with a ridiculous number of competing hobbies, time demands, and shifting preferences around the types of gaming experiences that I want to have, I've realized and admitted to myself that I value convenience and quality above just about anything else. By those two metrics, my opinion on the Series X is admittedly a bit mixed, or at least has a couple of asterisks by it. I definitely don't regret buying it because it has been helpful and convenient convenient to have a fast, SSD-driven game console and 4K Blu-ray player in our living room. It also remains fun to try out the many games I added to my account over a five-year span through the Games with Gold program, RIP, as well as sales and freebies in the online store. But do I actively look for any Xbox first party or even multi-platform games with any regularity these days? Sadly, no, not really. 
Ultimately here in 2024, I think it's a really capable, reliable, powerful, and accessible piece of hardware that just about any gamer would find useful and fun to play, especially if they're already an Xbox fan or if it's their very first game system, or if they're upgrading from something like the Xbox One or the 360 and want to remain in the Xbox ecosystem. However, if you're someone who, for example, already has a mid-range or high-powered PC or PS5, adding a Series X to your hardware options may not provide you as much mileage unless, one, there's some Xbox exclusive franchises that you really want to play and two, you would prefer not to play those games on your PC or you want to be able to play them in multiple places. So what do you think? Do you have an Xbox today and is it a Series X or a Series S? Or are you still rocking an Xbox One, a 360, or even the original from 2001? If you've got an Xbox system, how are you feeling about it today? And what do you think about Microsoft's current strategy for the Xbox brand? Let me know in the comments. And if you're curious to hear what my thoughts are after owning Sony's PlayStation 5 for the time I've had it so far, click right here to find out. Thank you.